Howdy, howdy. What up, folks? What up, folks? How are you guys doing on this Wednesday evening? On this Wednesday evening. Tonight, we are going to be talking about daily declarations and the importance of the power of the tongue. The importance of declarations and the importance of having knowledge yes. of the power in your tongue. Yes, yes. That's the power, most powerful thing we have on our body. Because it is able to speak life and speak death. It is sharp. Cut like it's, a knife. So. Yeah, it's, it's very sharp. Very sharp. I'm going to read the focus scripture for this evening. And then we're going to pray. Mm -hmm. And then we'll get into the prophetic releases. At which point we'll get into the declarations. And then we'll pray some more. <laughs> All right. Matthew yes. chapter 18 verses 18 through 20 it says verily i say unto you this is the king james whatsoever ye shall bind on earth shall be bound in heaven and whatsoever ye shall loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven again i say unto you that if two of you shall agree on earth as touching anything that they shall ask it shall be done for them of my father which is in heaven for where two or three are gathered together in my name, there am I in the midst of them. Yes, yes. And we are going to talk about that a little bit, but first, let's pray. Father God, we thank you for this evening. We thank you for this day. Father God, we thank you for this gathering, Father God, and we thank you for the eyes that are watching and the ears that are hearing. Father God, we thank you for wisdom and discernment and understanding, Father God, in the speaking and the preaching and the reading of this word, Father God. We pray that those who are listening are able to receive it, Father God, and allow it to sink deep into the hearts, Father God, allow it to give them strength. Father God, allow the Holy Spirit to allow them to understand, Father God, and have wisdom and allow them to carry it with them so when the scenario comes father god where this wisdom applies father god they will have it readily available father god for them to use it we just ask that you strengthen each and every person watching each and every person listening listening father god and help them to find their purpose inside of your word in Jesus' name we pray amen, amen. amen. all right so let's read that in the easy reading version yes, yes this is matthew chapter 18 verses 18 through 20 it says i can assure you that when you speak judgment here on earth it will be god's judgment and when you promise forgiveness here on earth it will be god's forgiveness mm -hmm. to say it another way if two of you on earth agree on anything you pray for my father in heaven will do what you ask yes if two or three people he reiterated are together believing in me i am there with them mm -hmm. now this is a very very important scripture because it is literally literally telling us the strength of believers in jesus gathering together and decreeing a thing anything in his name. In his name. That's very important. He is there also. That is that means he is there declaring and decreeing with us also. So when us believers unite and we decree and we declare a thing, we speak a thing, mm -hmm. it is so just as Jesus said it, just as God said it himself. Yep. It's yep. right here in his word. Yep. It's right here in black. And we speak in his name. It is as if he is speaking. Yeah. Yeah. And he says, I can assure you that when you speak judgment here on earth, it will be God's judgment. Listen to how powerful yeah. that is. Yeah. People, That's mighty. People powerful. misconstrue that one a lot. But his judgment, and we all know what his judgment means. Yeah. Let him know, let him know. And if you don't know, <laughs> you better ask somebody. It is very important. Make sure you ask the right person. Yes, make sure you <laughs> ask the right person. Right. Oh, Hold on, guys. We can read the prophet release if you want, but I don't right. want this. Uh, okay. All right. So, this, as we just said, if we speak it in his name, it is as if he is speaking. So this means this is the father speaking. And the father says, life and death are in the power of the tongue. As we stated already, I have permitted my people to rise up in authority and dominion. You are sitting back awaiting a, a rumble 
or puff of smoke by me while holding the rock and torch in your hands, holding the rock and torch in your hands. That is him symbolizing the power that he holds. Mm -hmm. My spirit is in you, leading you, guiding you and directing your path. Hold on to that truth and allow it to affect your behavior for your faith and confidence in me mixed with your declarations shall break down the walls of the enemy. Stop and block all delay and withhold the planned snares the enemy has sent out against you. You are in control. Be my light in a world of darkness. And this is indeed a world of darkness. Mm -hmm. Spread my word and set the record straight for courage lies in mm -hmm. obedience. Courage lies in obedience. That means that when God makes makes it clear to you what he wants you to do. This means I don't care what person is, is against it mm -hmm. on earth. I don't care if if the powers that be on earth, whoever they are, are against it. Your 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 mother, your father, your bro, your brother, sister, even your, your your spouse, if they're against what God said, courage lies in obedience. So that means you move forward anyway. Yep. You move forward anyway. And in that Courage is is always going to be rewarded. Yep. It's always going to be rewarded. But if God said that you can do it, that means you can do it. That's right. That means that that courage that it takes to obey what God is, has, has has driven you to do or told you to do, whenever you feel that feeling to keep moving forward, if it keeps just nagging at your side, that means God is telling you to do it, and that means you can do it. And when you lie inside of that courage, I promise you. It's a it's a clear uh it's a clear indication of the power that God has put inside of you. That's right. That is right. That's right. Allow it to affect your behavior. Your behavior. So that means, come on now. If we are people of God, if you're a man of God, a woman of God, you're supposed to look like one. You're supposed to act like one. You're supposed to speak like one. You're supposed to speak like one. <laughs> and when we say speak like one, we ain't talking about proper grammar, although that is invited and welcome. Uh -huh. We're talking about you can't give worldly advice if you're a man or woman of God. I mean, come on. Come on. Come on now. Like if you tell someone who's thinking about marriage that, well, you gotta, you know, you gotta you gotta try the milk before you buy the cow. No. No, that's not that's worldly advice. I digress though. And so we're gonna get into some some aligning scriptures and just some more supporting scriptures about how powerful the tongue is. Here. There yeah. Let's switch some stuff over for a second there. All right, just making sure you guys can still hear it. All right. All right. So, First Peter. First Peter. Three ten. The scriptures say, if you want to enjoy true life and have only good days, then avoid saying anything hurtful. You never let a lie come out of your mouth. And that is a perfect example of you should. Let it affect your behavior. The way you speak, what comes out of your mouth. It says, if you want to enjoy true life and have only good days. So hold on now. This means that what you speak affects what type of day you have. Yeah. I mean. What type of day you have and whether or not you enjoy true life. Because. A lot of people, I'm pretty sure, because we've all done it, where we just kind of just speak loosely without really paying attention to what's coming out. It's, it's an everyday thing. And so much so that when you do, it's so much so that when you do speak this way, when you speak death instead of life, most people don't even uh, pay attention to, to how their day is following this. Mm -hmm. I promise you, if you pay attention, you'll see a difference in speaking life and speaking death and how your day goes following that. Hello. Hello. Pay attention. Pay attention. That's right. Pay attention. And so let's go to the next scripture now because all of these scriptures tell us exactly how important. Yes. How important what comes out of our mouth. Listen. Is. Listen. The world that we live in, the larger portion of it, the larger portion of this world, and this is including believers. 
is unaware, so unaware of the spiritual battle that you're fighting on a daily basis. Mm -hmm. And and you when you speak that death into people, that means you're battling against each other. And when we battle against each other, that means we're stepping even further away from the war that's really going on. And think about how many personal, per, like personal bad days you've been having. You might need to check what's been coming out of your mouth. Because it's in scriptures. A good right day here. is a matter of decision making, really. And apparently, a matter of what you speak. Yeah, make decide to speak life. Hello, hello. All right, Joshua one eight. It says, "Always remember what is written in that book of law. Mm -hmm. Speak about that book and study it day and night. Then you can be sure to obey what is written there. If you do this, you will be wise and successful in everything you do. Not some of what you do. Everything Not half of what you do. You do everything." Now, I know somebody might be kind of wondering, why does she include this scripture? Because this scripture is talking about studying day and night. But no, you missed the part first. That, before that. First, it says, speak about that book. Mm -hmm. And study it day and night. Don't just study it. Don't just show up to church on Sunday. Don't just pray at night. It says, speak about that book. Yep. What is the book? The book, that, the book of law. The book of scriptures, the Bible. Yes, yes. Speak about that book and study it day and night. Then you can be sure to obey what is written there. So that means if you don't speak about that book, you can't be sure. If you don't study that book day and night, you can't be sure. You might think you obey in the written scripture. Mm -hmm. You might have intended to. But what it say here? Yeah. You cannot be sure if you're not speaking about that book and studying that book day and night. That means that you can't just uh hear someone talk about it and say, okay, I listened to someone talk someone talk about it. Gotta come out of your mouth. Gotta come out of your mouth. Got to come out of your mouth. If you do this, you will be wise and successful in everything you do. Everything. Maybe some of us aren't successful because we have not spoke about that book. Yeah. And uh, also. Day and night. Also, you, you, you want to you wanna fine tune what your idea of success is as well. But that's another topic for another day. And I want you guys, I want to give you guys like a real relative everyday example of the importance or significance in speaking things aloud, the benefits of speaking things aloud. If you think about dreaming, like not like a goal dream, but like a, a literally a dream that you have while you're sleeping. Mm -hmm. You ever remember your dream as soon as you wake up? Right. But like an hour later, it's gone. You like it's just gone. Yeah. And it's crazy how that is because yeah. with anything else, you can generally remember an hour yeah. later. But with Pretty dreams, much, yeah. it's like you literally forget. Yeah. But have you ever, as soon as you woke up, told someone what the dream was? It's hard to forget. And you told them, and since you actually talked about that dream, you remember it. There are a lot of dreams that I have had that I remember only because I talked about it. I share that dream. I spoke that dream aloud. Yeah. I let it from I took it from here and put it out here. Much easier to remember when you speak it because when you speak it it brings it to life. Yeah. Yeah. See, what you have to understand is this is a system. You have a bunch of things in here, a bunch of you got your thoughts. You got what the devil's saying. You got what God is saying. You got what your friends are saying, what your family is saying, what your spouse is saying, what your kids are saying. All the opinion, opinions of man. You have society, the media, music. You have all of these things. But what is in a man's heart mm -hmm. is what comes out of his mouth. And that's where, that's that's what is going to be inside of your true life. And so when you take something from here 
and let it come out of here, that's what's in your heart. Yep. Tell me how you really feel. Tell me how you really feel. That's what's coming out of here. And so it is very important that not only are we speaking things that are not as though they were, not only are we speaking nice things, things that are not hurtful, but we are also speaking the word of God. Yep, we're yep. speaking about that book. We're speaking about the things that we believe. Mm -hmm. Sometimes things aren't even official until we say it yep. out loud. Until we say it out loud. Until we say, like, imagine being a woman and getting a marriage proposal via text or email. Now, I don't know about you, but I ain't accepting that because that ain't really no proposal. Yeah. Now, I ain't necessarily saying a person must go all out and do this extravagant proposal. That's to each his own. However, what you will do is ask me out your mouth. You're not about to put it on the screen and get it to me and through the cloud, through the air, whatever. It's not going to happen. That's not going to happen. And the same thing applies. The same thing applies as children of God. Our job is to get out the message. You can't read my thoughts. I can testify all I want to in here. No. I can have a bit as big as a, a, a testimony as ever in here, but it will do nothing for me. It will do nothing for right. you if it doesn't come out of here. If it stays here, I mean, it's going. It's it's going to live there for however long it lives, and then it's going to die there. Yeah, exactly. Absolutely. And so Romans 10, verse 17, it says, so faith comes from hearing. That is hearing the good news about Christ. Now, let me ask you something, because we just, we just said it. Now, we just said it. But also, can you just, wait. now, I don't know about y'all, but I can hear myself talking right now. I can. Now, how it sounds in here, it might not be exactly how it sounds to everyone else. You have to play yourself back and it's like, yo, I sound like that. Yeah, man. I mean, in my mind, that sounds like Charlie Murphy. What kind of dude? And but but he got like a little bit more rasp of a growl. I, I said in my mind. So I'm not talking about my speaker voice. I'm saying when I speak it, when I speak it, obviously I can hear. If I can hear when I speak it, then you can hear when I speak it. And so sometimes, all the time, really speaking, all the time, right? Yes, yeah. speaking increases our faith that's why we decree and declare it, to yeah. improve our faith because faith comes from hearing. hearing because if we sat on this video with these declarations and just stood here like and just expect y'all to get it <laughs> expect y'all to get these declarations and we just sat here like Very silly. Ah. There is no one who can hear you more than you can hear you. Yes. Yes. Hello. Yes, yes. Two ears. Two ears. One, one mouth. mouth. But this thing here is powerful. Mm -hmm. It is powerful. It Not is powerful. just for taste. Yeah. Not just for taste. Okay. But anyway. And the next thing we're going to read, the last scripture that we're going to read before we jump into the declarations, guys, is Genesis chapter one. And I know it, it, it's, it's kind of a long chapter. It's quite a few verses. Yeah, 28 to be exact. But I just, I must read it. Let's see here. I'm going to read it in the easy reading version as well. Because I want you guys to understand the importance of speaking out of your mouth. And I want you to understand the magnitude of how significant it really is, how powerful, how authoritative it actually is. And what better way to do that other than going to the Bible directly is getting the number one person in the Bible who did it. Yeah. The creator, the okay. father. Yeah, the, yes. So let's read Genesis chapter one. It says, in the beginning, when God created the earth and sky, the earth was without life and not yet useful for anything. Deep waters covered, covered the earth 
and darkness covered the water. God's spirit was moving like a storm over the surface of the water. Mm -hmm. Okay. Number, verse three. Then God said, let there be light. God said. God said. He didn't just look at it and just hope the, light oh. came. Have like light in his heart. Like just think light. Yeah. It says, then God said. God spoke. Mm -hmm. He opened his mouth. He said, let there be light. And light began to shine. Just like that. He it's said like it, that. it happened. And remember, when all of us are touching and agreeing, mm -hmm. when we believe in Christ together as a unit and we are touching and agreeing, agreeing and decreeing and declaring together as a body of Christ, as a body. Jesus is there with us also decreeing and declaring, agreeing, touching and agreeing. And, and, and what that means is when we decree and declare together, God decrees and declares it, and it's just as if God said it or did it. Yep. And we see what happens when God says it. We see it what happens instantaneously. God, he said, he, he said, let there be light, and there was light. Yep. It didn't take two hours. He didn't have to microwave it for it to show up. Yep. He said it, and it was, and it was. Yep. And he saw the light. He knew that it was good. Then he separated the light from the darkness. God named the light day, and he named the darkness night. There was evening and then there was morning. This was the first day. All right, let's go to the second day. Then God said, let there be space to separate the water into two parts. God said. Let there be space. That's what he said. Yeah, so he I said. guess I guess, I guess, guess that means space comes. So God made the space and separated the water. Some of the water was above it and some of the water was below it. Below it. God named that space sky. Hello, sky. There was evening and then there was morning. This was the second day. So each day, God did nothing other than speak. Right. Now see. And in speaking. And, 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 hello, Scott. And, and I believe that this was to put it, to make it clear the importance of speaking because we are, obviously, we know God doesn't have to say it for it to happen. You know what I'm saying? He's doing this to demonstrate. Now, God named that space God. There was evening, then there was morning. This was the second day. The third day, then God said, mm -hmm. let the water under the sky be gathered together so that the dry land will appear and it happened. God named the dry land earth. And he named the water that was gathered together seas. And God saw that this was good. Mm -hmm. Then God said, let the earth grow grass, plants that make grain and fruit trees. The fruit trees will make fruit with seeds in it and each plant will make its own kind of seeds. Have you seen the seeds? Have you seen the fruit? Have you seen the trees? Have you seen the grain? Yes. All from him speaking it. Let these plants grow on the earth. And it happened. The earth grew grass and plants that made grain and it grew trees that made fruit with seeds in it. Every plant made its own kind of seeds and God saw that this was good. So in just him speaking, not only did he create trees, fruits, seeds, plants, but he created it as a cycle, to recreate. a never ending cycle that will continue to recreate and recreate and re that will continue, continue to yeah. multiply. Yeah. There was evening and then there was morning. This was the third day. Fourth day, then God said, let there be lights in the sky. These lights will separate the days from the nights. Hello, night. They will be used for signs to show when special meetings begin and to show the days and years. This is still going on today. Mm -hmm. This was over 2,000 years ago. Yes. They will be in the sky to shine light on the earth. And, and it, it happens. happens. So God made the two large lights. He made the larger light to rule during the day and the smaller light to rule during the night. He also made the star. Hello, stars. God put these lights in the sky to shine on the earth. He put them in the sky to rule over the day and over the night. They separated the light from the darkness. And God saw that this was good. There was evening and then there was morning. This was the fourth day. All of this is God speaking. Then God said, it's the fifth day. Let the water be filled with many living things and let there be birds to fly in the air over the earth. So God created the large sea animals. He created all the many living things in the sea and every kind of bird that flies in the air. And God saw that this was good. God blessed all the living things in the sea and told them to have many babies and fill the sea. They still doing it today. Still doing it. Just because he said it. And he blessed the birds on the land and told them to have many more babies. He told them. Told them. He didn't say, oh, I designed them to make many more babies. I told them. He told them. Yeah. 
And so they did. There was evening and then there was morning. This was the fifth day. Let's get to the sixth day. Then God said, let the earth produce many kinds of living things. Let there be many different kinds of animals. Let there be large animals and small crawling animals of every kind. Of every kind. And let all these animals produce more animals and all these things happen. That's what you And all, all these things happen. So God made every kind of animal. He made the wild animals, the tame animals, and all the small crawling things. And God saw that this was good, all from him speaking out of his mouth. Now, this is where it gets good. Mm -hmm. This is where it gets even more interesting. It's been good. But then God said, now let's make humans who will be like us. In his own us. image. Him. The angel, be like us. Mm -hmm. Be like us. Now, he just did all of that. And now he's going to create us to be like them, him. They will rule over all the fish in the sea. All the fish. And birds in the air. I'm going to repeat it. They will rule over all the fish in the sea and the birds in the air. That's why you can go fishing and that's why you can go hunting. They will rule over all the large animals and all the little things that crawl on the earth. Yep, yep. So God created humans in his own image. He created them to be like himself. To be like himself in the image of God. He created them, it says here. He created them male and female. Male and female. I'm going to repeat that for the hearing impaired. He ah, created them male, male and female. female. Not non-binary. <laughs> okay. Not unisex. They is not both of them. Not pansexual, not asexual. He created it male. They is both of them, not one Female. God blessed them and said to them, have many children. Now, how him and him going to do that? We ain't going to touch it. <laughs> he created them male and female. Uh, and God blessed them and said to them, because we ain't talking about that tonight. Yeah. God blessed them and said to them, have many children. Mm -hmm. Fill the earth and take control over it. Do what now? Fill the earth and take control of it. It's fine. Rule over the fish in the sea and the birds in the air. Rule over every living thing that moves on the earth. God said, I am giving you all the grain bearing plants and all the fruit trees. These trees make fruit with seed in it. This grain and fruit will be your food. And it is. So all of this is about what God said, God said, God said, just for us to get to the point that God said it, it happens. And we were made in his image. So, so that we means say it. It happens. It happens. That is exactly we are why. Of God. That is exactly why the, the statement that when you speak in his name, it is as if he is speaking. Because Hello. he said it, we said it, it happens. Hello. Hello. And I feel like what better way to express the power in, of the tongue, the, the authority in speaking, than to start from the beginning. Yeah. Not just hit scripture, but hit scripture at the beginning. The beginning. Yes. God spoke it. He didn't have to. He could have just could have raised his hand, snapped his finger, blinked an eye. He could have literally did nothing but just thought it. And, and... <laughs> he could have done nothing, really. He did nothing in a sense that all he did was speak it. Could have snapped it's his so hand. Could have picked up some dust and said, and then just... And it's such amazing how nothing is a whole lot of stuff. Yeah. And so we're going to get into these declarations yes, yeah. today. Today we have general daily declarations that you can say every day, every night. You can say two, three times a day. Yeah. But I still want you to leave this evening or from watching this video knowing the importance of decre declaring, decreeing. The importance of opening your mouth and speaking. Yeah. Out loud. The Bible says confess with your mouth. Out loud. Speak it. Speak it. Speak it. And it shall be so. All right. We're going to get into these declarations. And of course, if you want the PDF file uh -huh. of these declarations and the scripture that we discussed and read on this evening, you can go on the website at illyministries.us backslash, I'm sorry, forward slash prophecy. Okay? 
All right. We decree and declare that we are the head and not the tail. Mm -hmm. We decree and declare that we are safe, healed, and healthy. Yeah. We decree and declare that our finances are thriving better than they've ever been and filled with more than enough to be comfortable, pay all bills and debts, and greatly bless others. We decree and declare that we are debt free. We decree and declare that we own our own homes, own real estate, and prime properties with the yes, freedom yes. to use them for building God's kingdom yes, yes. and helping his people. Yes, yes. We decree and declare that multiple wonderful opportunities and doors are open for us to walk into now. We decree and declare that our ministries and businesses are thriving just as God has predestined and will continue to glory. Hello. Hallelujah. We decree and declare that our dwellings shall never fall, mm -hmm. break, rip, burn, experience water damage, blow away, be stolen, or be destroyed or damaged in it, it, any way. We decree and declare that we are prophets and leaders of God, and he uses us to speak to his people and spread the good news. We decree and declare that we do not and will not take that responsibility lightly. The Lord knows I can't even speak. Responsibility. Responsibility lightly. And we will solely rely on the Holy Spirit to speak to God's people and refrain from arrogance, pride, and vanity. We decree and declare that we are the teachers, parents, and leaders God created us to be. And we maintain all roles just as God desires. We decree and declare that God has given us all the wisdom, yes. knowledge, and understanding yes, to, fulfill yes. God, to fulfill God's purpose in our lives. We decree and declare that we operate in all gifts of the Spirit. Yes. We decree and declare that all skills, talents, and abilities God desires us to use are being strengthened now. And the Holy Spirit shall fill those areas at any and every time they're being used or mm -hmm. shared for the purpose of God's kingdom and his will. Yes, we decree and declare that our children, students, nieces and nephews, cousins and grandchildren are thriving in school. They are wise beyond their years. They love the Lord greatly and obey him and they will never separate from the love of God. Yes, yes. We apply God, um, we apply Christ's blood to our safety, our health, our relationships, our children, our encounters, our experiences, and our finances in the name of Jesus. Hello. In the name of Jesus, there is nothing wrong with our hearts, organs, arteries, or bodies. By faith, we command them all to function appropriately the way God designed, and we order it to remain the appropriate side. Yes, yes. We decree and declare that we are healthy and well. No sickness, disease, anemia, pain, or discomfort shall dwell in us or affect us. In the name of Jesus, we are completely healed and free of stress, depression, and oppression. In the name of Jesus, we walk on this earth just as Jesus did. Mm -hmm. By faith, we pray for people, heal people. And perform miracles in Jesus' name. Yes, yes. We decree and declare that this shall be one of the best seasons best season. of our lives and shall impact millions of people. Yes, yes. In the name of Jesus, supporters are coming. Yes, Prayers yes. for us and our journeys are being offered yes, up. Yes. And God is sending his provision to support our journeys, yes, yes. paths, and endeavors aligning in God's will. Yes, yes. We decree and declare that our children are praying for others and ministering to people just as they watch their parents and spiritual leaders do. If they do not have any spiritual leaders, God is sending the leaders assigned to them now in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, we are wise beyond our years, wise beyond understanding, and God's leading, instructing, and di directing is the one and only influence over our family and our family's journey. Yes, yes. We decree and declare that no one will cause trouble for us or negatively affect us in a way that interferes with what God has yes, set yes. us out to do. Yes, yes. We decree and declare that government assistance is not our portion. Hallelujah. We speak against poverty, Hallelujah. lack, oppression, hunger, yes, and yes. living paycheck to paycheck. Amen. There shall be no more lack in the name of Jesus. Yes, yes. By faith, we are wealthy. We have everything we need, and we are well and able to get the things we desire that God permits us to get or yes, yes. to have. We plead the blood of Christ on our relationship with God, our marriages, our children, our lifestyle, our relationships, our finances, and our purpose and destiny in the name of Jesus. Yes. We decree and declare that we are well equipped and prepared to do the work of the Lord daily without hesitation or doubt. 
In the name of Jesus, many shall be blessed by our journeys and testimonies and inspired to develop their own personal relationship with God. We decree and declare that this season shall be fruitful, filled with growth and harvest in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, for all things on this list, we have faith, we believe it, we receive it, and it is so in Jesus' name. Amen. Yes, yes, yes. That was good. That was yes, good. yes, yes. Whew. That was a word. So uh, we're going to pray. We're going to close it out with this prayer. Yes, Father God, we thank you for this gathering of the minds, Father God. We thank you for the message, Father God, that was given, Father God, that was spoken, Father God. We pray that speaking these words, Father God presses presses on the hearts of people, Father God, so that they may turn their lives over to you. Father God, draw them nearer to you. Father God, we thank you for allowing us to be vessels, Father God, so that we can share your word and speak with the power of your name, Father God. Father God, thank you for the Holy Spirit, Father God, and allowing it to use us, allowing it to help us, Father God. We pray that each and every voice that is spoken in your name, Father God, release the power that lives in them through you, Father God. We pray that each and every person that saw, every person that heard, Father God, allow them to be stronger, Father God, and allow them to walk forward inside of your will, Father, will, Father God, fearlessly, boldly, courageously, Father God, and allow them to speak, Father God, without any fear of what may come, because Father God, everything that you have told us to speak, Father God, we know it is good, Father God, we know that it is true, and we will continue to move forward, Father God, in your will. Just continue to be you, a redeemer, a healer, or a deliverer, Father God, and we will continue exalting your name. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen, guys. We thank you so much for joining us on this yes, yes. evening for prophetic prayer. Yes, yes. We encourage you guys to stay in the word, stay in prayer, stay humble, and fast, speak. And speak. And speak That's the right. word of God. Speak, speak. Remember. Remember that anyone, anyone who speaks idle words will have to account for every single word, every single word every they single have word. said so on judgment day. You better, lim you better limit those words that, that don't help anything. Let me get it for you. I can't think right now. late and tired there it is there it is yep 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 matthew chapter 12 verse 36 there it is there it is let's see for every idle word men may speak they will give account of it in the day of judgment for by your words you will be justified and by your words you will be condemned, mm, condemned. so watch what you say Condemn, and it's only Watch one. Your mouth. And it's only one person that can condemn. That's a sermon. Watch your mouth. Mm -hmm. Hey, <laughs> hey, well, watch your mouth, B. <laughs> All right, we love you guys. Thank you so much for joining us. Yeah, have a good one. Good night. Bye. -bye. Bye. Bye. Bye.